Um, because I was going to say to you, we obviously we'd had six weeks of six eight weeks mm -hmm. of getting to know your face as, when you before you had the the I didn't we didn't recognise you when we came I think, down. Yeah, you saying that, yeah. When we came down to fetch you, because at Birmingham um, you obviously take them down so that they can put them to sleep and then you go back down to fetch them yeah. in the recovery. And I didn't recognise you. <laughs> I remember the bloke you saying had got that, yeah. you in, and and I did have. A bit of a, that's not my baby. Oh no, yeah, it's. I suppose because it's, that wasn't your face. Yeah, I your face you got used was to that. Your, yeah. exactly. That was your face after the initial like, yeah, that's it. That's and, that, and yeah, you get used that to it. Yeah, that you were our child yeah. with that. Yeah, it's and <laughs> wow, they gave me this child, <laughs> so I had to meet you again yeah. for the second time just because, because of that, yeah. yeah, because you looked completely different. Absolutely different. Taxi for Ronnie, yeah? Yeah, that's me, yeah. How you doing, mate? Alright? Yeah, all good. Tell you what, mate, keep the change, alright? No problem, buddy. No problem. I'm Ronnie Parsons. I was born on the 10th of June 2005 to Andrew and Claire Parsons. I was born here at Stafford County Hospital, or as it was then known, Stafford District General Hospital, and I was born with a unilateral cleft lip and palate. So some people are born with just a cleft lip, um, and others are just born with a cleft palate, whereas in my case, I was born with a cleft lip and palate, um, and the specific name of mine is a unilateral cleft lip and palate, um, which just affects the left side of my lip um, and there's bilateral as well which is uh, two notches or s uh, splits um, in the lip um, but in my case it was just unilateral. When I was growing up I never let my cleft affect me in any way um, and there's a lot of ignorance that surrounds it because people are too afraid to ask questions they sort of just point and stare really. Um, and I've had the odd comment over the years, sort of here and there, you know, why is your lip weird, uh, wonky lip, uh, learn to speak properly, etc. Um, but like I say, I've never let it bother me, really. Um, I just see it as a part of me and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that to be any different. A cleft lip occurs when the structures that form the upper lip or palate fail to join when the baby is developing in the womb. The cause of a cleft is still relatively unknown but it's very unlikely to have been caused by anything done or not done during pregnancy. In a few cases, cleft lip and palates are associated with smoking or drinking during pregnancy, taking certain medication, lack of folic acid during pregnancy, or even in some cases, clefts can be genetic. Now, none of these reasons are why I have a cleft, and to be honest, my parents are still unsure, and they both have many theories about how my cleft was caused. To start my journey, I wanted to interview the woman who I care for most of all, and without her, I wouldn't be here. My mum, Claire Parsons. So, mum, the reason why I wanted to interview you, most of all, is because without you I wouldn't be here. Um, Obviously. And I feel like you know more than me, because you'll remember of when I was born, all the lead up to it. So when did you find out that I had a, a cleft? Um, so I went for my 20-week scan mm -hmm. at the hospital, um, where they do, obviously, they check in more detail so your heart and lungs yeah. and all that kind of thing and um one of the things that they check is the face yeah and she said uh, she couldn't get a good enough picture so could we go back in a couple of weeks yeah um so we went back probably about 22 weeks i would be 22 weeks pregnant she said uh yes um baby looks like it's got a hair lip Hair lip. Hair lip is what she referred to it as. Wow. Um, and I remember me and your dad sort of were 
more well, uh, at the fact that she'd used that term because yeah. even though we probably both grew up with the term hair lip was it as, as kids, dissolved at, at that point at, at that point wow we knew that it isn't called that anymore yeah um it's not really a, a nice term for it so that was at 22 weeks so then we got an appointment to go to birmingham women's hospital mm. 24 weeks um and we had probably about half an hour maybe even longer really in-depth detailed scan they literally checked everything and that's when i found out i was having a boy oh uh, purely by accident. Oh. Because <laughs> I saw a couple of things on the screen that I shouldn't have done. Um, like I say, obvious telltale signs. Yeah, I was like, like that to your dad going, <laughs> um, it's none the wiser. Um, but yeah, so, and then that was it. And he confirmed it was, I don't know whether at the time they could say that it was unilateral, bilateral, whether it was your palate or not. I can't yeah. remember that. But confirmed, obviously, that you've got a cleft lip. Yeah and but everything else was fine there yeah. was no other problems that was the scariest moment yeah for me Please. look he's going in for his operation tomorrow that's why i want to film him hey look gonna give us a smile I struggled with feeding you yeah. yeah i couldn't get the hang of that feeding you yeah it's um, like, i suppose it's difficult with any child anyway like i can imagine obviously you'd had riley and stuff and had that practice i suppose it's just Starting all again, isn't it really? <coughs> well, the thing is, with with a normal baby, you stick the bottle in and they do the rest. <laughs> yeah, just sit there and yeah. Basically, yeah. you do, you do. Whereas with you, you ha like I say, you hadn't got that ability to form a vacuum, mm. so therefore you would go like that, and you wouldn't have the yeah to draw the milk out of the bottle. Yeah. So what you had to do was you had to there were squeezy soft pliable bottles yeah. at the point of you going you'd have you went, to squeeze it so, yeah so it was right like so you yeah that, that difficult that, that took first. me yeah took me a while it's your nose <laughs> you'd be choking oh, and, and, <laughs> which was traumatizing yeah. because yeah. that should be the most natural thing that a, a mum can do yeah. Yeah. and i couldn't do it You were born in June. June of 2005, and then... And you'd had your first... It was actually a cancellation. You were due to have it, I want to say, September, October time. Um, and they rang us and said, we've got a cancellation, can you come in? Um, your dad would probably remember how close that was between... <laughs> to the day, yeah, to, uh, to the I time as well. <laughs> um, but you had your operation on the 1st of September, so okay. I think you were about eight weeks old. My palate... Six was months, six months yeah see i was under the impression quite a while ago that they did it at the same time I, no. I wasn't aware that they did the lip first then the palate first i'm not sure now if they do it differently yeah but yeah i was i was unaware no, of that no. at one point of just they did it at separate stages no you did yeah your lip first um and your palate at six months so i think it was your lip in august it's about september yeah and then you had your palate done at christmas the final question is only one that you can answer and wondering what the answer would be but if you had the option to go back in time or had the option for me to be born without a cleft would you want that to happen why would i want that to happen I, it's I, yeah it's just one of them would uh, you want to yeah or? but that no because you were you yeah that was that was you that's whatever the fate yeah. has decided you were going to be born like that yeah wouldn't be making this documentary we now. We wouldn't be it, making yeah. this documentary that, that, that potentially yeah. could, whatever, no? Yeah. It's it's not even a, oh, I wish. Because it's, yeah. because it's never been a problem. Yeah. Um, I mean, hearing, hearing what you've said throughout, I think it's sort of just like, it's made me realise a little bit more of just like, for that however long period, that's it. That's all that matters. And especially nowadays, obviously that was, what, 18, almost 18 years ago. So that... Nowadays, I think it could be, like I say, I'm not too sure, it could be even quicker. The process could be like literally, you know, instant or, I don't know. Yeah, I, know, I, I don't know what the, the you know, because it's, it's changing all of the time. Yeah. Um, but no, nah, not at all. And your dad will say the same. Yeah. Why? Yeah. It's, it's just a little, you know. Yeah. One of them things. It would be different if, 
you'd probably if, if it came with some kind of medical issues as yeah. well but it didn't yeah so i can't i can't think about it it's given us an insight into a lot of things that yeah we would never have had an insight into as well mm. so we've learned a lot of stuff over the years as well and it's you wouldn't be you without it i've, I've said this um i've, I've been whether asking, you would have had the you know. personality that you've got because <sighs> well <laughs> but there again we we didn't treat you any different no. i'd like to think it, that we didn't treat you any differently than we would would have we never talked to, about it because no. it's not nothing to talk about it's nothing no. nothing big it's nothing special it's nothing you've had a couple of operations yeah. when you were younger and then again, you, you you have people say like, "Oh, you don't talk about it. Are you ashamed?" And it's just like, "No," because why? why you, yeah, exactly. It's we wouldn't talk about you if you got blonde hair. <laughs> oh, <laughs> exactly. Oh, it's got blonde. No, yeah, that's all. It's it just is, one of things. Yeah. Everything has been normality. Mm. Um, you've got an appointment. We go. We see a variety of people. They used to be exciting days. Yeah. Because we could find out loads of stuff, and it was a day off work, and we yeah. we got. I used to enjoy that kind of thing. Yeah, and that's where I think the second bear come from as well, actually. I'm pretty mm. sure. One I of think them. it was one of the appointments. But the difference of... <laughs> like I say, that, that, I think that's what's... That's almost 18 years old, and that one's probably... I think It's about probably about 13 years old. I might have had that one on my bone graft, I don't know. I've always looked at them, they've always just been sat in my room at one point, and I've never really given much thought into them. Obviously, I know what they were, they were with the clapper um, on, on both of them. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, oh, okay, and I've always kept to, and I'm glad I have because, I've, as I was doing all well, the, 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 this, I was just like, yeah, stay with you forever, were they then? Yeah. After an in-depth interview, we decided to look through some baby photos of me with my cleft, but my mum had some trouble seeing the photos. Is both your glasses no. on? Probably would have been a good idea, but <laughs> it's fine. Do you want to get, sure you I'll want pretend to get... I can see what I'm looking at. <laughs> If you need help, just be like... Yeah, that looks like Do you like want to just get your glasses? Where are they? Hold on. Right, do you want to start from dad and go up? This is what I was saying to your dad. Go so, on. this is... I had a scan... I don't know why I had a scan at ten and a half weeks with you, but you would have had it by then. So, oh, on no. this picture, you can't even... You're not even distinguishable as a baby. It's a bag bean, isn't it? But or? you would have... Had it. Had it then. That's the day you were born, I think. Yes, that's the day you were born. Yeah, that's... Yeah. I, I've seen that picture a, a, load, a lot of times. But so you had, you had got dummies in? Yeah. So... Yeah, that's it, isn't it, for them? Yeah, so that's the... I've not put them all... First of Sep yeah, first of September is the day you had it. I'm kind of glad, to be honest, that you, have took, you took as many pictures as you did. That was so scary that day. Really was scary that day. How come? Because you were tight. You were you were this big, <laughs> and you're having all that done. It was once you come back and woke up. It was like getting fed. Yeah. Put the, the bottle in your mouth, type of thing, and yeah. Get all of that back to normal. So well, we're as that, soon as we could. On that video, it's the thirteenth of August. No, September, September, sorry, 13th September. Yeah. On that video. Yeah. And I look fairly normal. There's no stitches or anything. So when did I have my stitches out? If that looks, because if it's only two weeks, well, mind you, it's I two think, weeks after, isn't it? I, I suppose. Think, I, I think I did find somewhere, and I think it was six days mm. after your dad just stitched. I have got it written down somewhere. See that one? That's. Oh, I'm gone through it. That's two days after surgery, so that'll be at home. That's three days after your surgery. So, I mean, that looks like I've been in a bus stop in, you know, in a, in a pub or something. But Now, after speaking with my mum, I wanted to talk to some other people who had grown up with a cleft. I had written a post on a cleft lip and palate Facebook group trying to arrange interviews. One person that replied was Sharon Barrett, a 59-year-old businesswoman who runs a clothing alteration business in Washington. After a long car journey from Cannock, we had arrived up north, and it was time to meet Sharon. Right, go in here. Please press the bell, right. Give the bell a ring. It's nice in here, isn't it? Sharon, 
Hi, yeah. Always. How are you all right? Yeah, all good. Oh, lovely to meet you. All better for seeing you. Yeah, lovely. Right, uh, I've not come to have anything altered, unfortunately, but are we all right to have a yeah. chat? Come yeah, come on through. Sound. So, um, when did your mum and dad find out when you had a cleft? Not until I was actually born, because like, I was born in 64 and there was no scans or anything then. D did your mum say anything about like how the doctors dealt with it, or did they tell her? She or? just said that they said it was a cleft lip and palate, mm. and uh, they, they weren't sure how it happened. Um, she, the only bit I remember her telling is about I couldn't bottle feed because I couldn't suck, because there was yes. no roof in my mouth. Yeah. She said, and, the, the milk would come down your nose and my dad's mum said, oh, your mum went through an awful time of trying to feed you until three months till yeah. they did the pallet and then... I think oh, I was sort of like that. I think it's just like that because um, I think when... I don't know if Clapper would have been about. I think, I no. think Clapper was registered yeah. in, I think, 1979, I think yeah. I looked. I'd um, only joined that last year, so yeah. I'm quite it's, new to it. It's one of them that I... Maybe born in 2005, um, sort of a lot more like modern and how they've dealt yeah. with things. And um, when I was born, my mum said that someone from Clapper came to see my mum, basically just oh, explained that was it good. all. Yeah. Um, and I think you get given um, a sort of like care package. So yeah. I got given, um, there's like a bear, I've still got it. Yeah. Um, and I think they give you these special type of bottles. So I think that they're not as hard, I yeah. think. Um, so I've you can, seen, you I've can seen sort of, um, research on them. Yeah. yeah. Um, cause I, think you can obviously I don't think there was anything like that in the 60s. <sighs> See, My mum said she had to spoon the milk uh, and try and get the spoon the opposite way to go. Oh, wow. I'd yeah. say, it's, it's how, mm -hmm. I think times come on and technology's come forward. Yeah. It's, yeah, brilliant. Even the surgery side of it's came far now. Yeah. Um, so, how old were you when you had your repair? I imagine I you had, had your lip, lip first. repaired at six weeks old. Yeah in Belfast, um, and I had the palate repaired at three months. Ah, uh, was that in mm -hmm. Belfast as well? Yeah, or? Belfast, yeah. Ah, uh, because you... I was born in Colchester. Yeah. My dad was in the army. My uh. mum was originally from Belfast, and my dad got stationed in Belfast. But I think where I was born in Colchester, there was no facilities there to be able to repair it, so... Right. So, in terms of surgeries post-repair, have you had any major surgeries to do with the clefts, or...? I haven't had any, really, to do with the cleft, but... My nose was deformed growing up. Yeah. And I wanted, I was told actually when I was became 18, I would get surgery on my nose from the local doctor's surgery. And I did used to visit a hospital in Newcastle. I don't want to call one of the MPs, but Margaret Thatcher was in government then and there was no money in the health service. So the surgery got stopped. They said like it was classed as cosmetic and, um, but I literally couldn't breathe through my nose. My nose was closed inside. Ah. And I was told later on, when the cleft had stopped, when the head grows from the outside in, it just stops my nose. It continued growing. And the doctor said, your nose is just, it looks like it's just continued growing and it's all twisted. So then it wasn't until I was in my 40s, I thought I had a wart and I was blowing my nose thinking, and I went to see a doctor and he said, it's a skin tag. Mm. And I think it's been there all your life and you've just noticed it. And he said, would you not like your nose straightened? So that's how I became, yeah. I didn't get my nose straightened until I was 41. Mm. Then, because of getting my nose straightened, before and after shots, mm. I got referred back to Newcastle, yeah. RVI, who, he said, your face is extremely flat. So they were talking about moving me up a jaw forward. And then when I had scans and x-rays, I had no bone at the base of my nose, so I hadn't uh, had a graft done. Right. Which, I think kids did get the grafts done, but yeah. I don't know whether it's because my family moved around a lot. Yeah. Um, and then I went in and had the graft done, and I had a rib graft from my rib into my face ah. and um, my confidence just changed, yeah. totally, totally changed from having no confidence, didn't go out far. If I got the bus, I'd sit on the left instead of the right because the left side was worse than the right. Yeah. Because of the palate being left sided. Yeah. They it's said the bones on that side are smaller than that side. And yeah. That's, it, yeah, it's uh -huh. amazing really because yeah. it's... So, so the, the surgery for me yeah. literally changed my life. It was just... A bit disappointing that I had to wait all that time to get that. Yeah. It's what I'm not. Doesn't bother me anymore. I just think. No. I'm at an age now where I look at other people and I just think people who's bullied me in the past, and mm. I just think you're you and I'm me. Yeah. So and would like, you say you've 
Have you been affected by bullying growing up? Or yeah, is it more in my generation I was, yeah. yeah. A lot from, from boys at school, yeah. men as I got older. Yeah. It was like this was the estate where I grew up and like when I was young you could buy cigarettes then. My mum used to send us to the shop which was down here. Yeah. And I remember being like 12, 13, 14 and I'd be walking down here and this pub was one of the pubs where one instance there was two men used to sit in the window yeah there and they would see me coming obviously and they would literally bang on the window and mm. say look how oh, budgie look at this snap on that and so I, would you probably be about like here yeah, and there they would be banging on the window and shouting stuff out the window and these men actually used to drink with me dad when my dad was away all week yeah and he used to come home on a friday he was a lorry driver but i didn't dare tell him I didn't dare tell him the things that they used to do. Could you, could you imagine what, if you had told your dad, what do you reckon he would have done or he said? He probably or? would have knocked them out. <laughs> and for yeah, the my reason, dad used to stick off yeah. hours a lot. I, and there was times where I didn't want to go to school when I was bullied, so my mm. dad would say, oh, how will you come with me? And we used to go away, he used to take me with him in the wagon, travel yeah. the country, and just to get us away from the bullying. But it's, like, just, it's made us a better person. Like, yeah. I don't know. I think if that hadn't happened, it probably wouldn't be where I'm today. Yeah. Do you get us? Yeah, I think uh -huh. I could just imagine, like you say, mm -hmm. if you're coming from here and yeah. you're just trying to go about your day, you know, do this and start yeah. getting, getting the face People to your would mom shout, like, shout across the road and it's, you know, yeah. stuff about my nose and that. Like, I didn't have an issue the way I looked, it was other people made it an issue. Yeah, and so that's, I think that's obviously probably must pile on and make it even worse. And yeah. if people are just like egging it and it's just, yeah, yeah not. Not awful. nice at all. But Absolutely just, awful. Yeah. Yeah, just baffling. Uh, mm -hmm. Like hearing that story and then actually being here. Yeah. It all sort of I like. Mean, that pub makes was sense, a lovely yeah. pub and the people in it were absolutely lovely. Yeah. But them two men. They were brothers, two brothers. It happened where people who did call me when I was younger, they've gone through life and had children of their own and there's been things wrong. Mm. And I think, yeah. well, now you'll realise. Bit of karma. Yeah. Yeah. And when I wrote my story, you know, my friend said, I always remember being with you and I remember all the horrible people like them. Yeah. I guess that's what my next question would be is that, you know, you said you'd go around and knock on all your friends' doors and mm -hmm. um, talk to all them. Would, like, say you still have an instant like that happen when you were with your friends? Would they still do that or would yeah. it be. Oh, yeah. okay. So but I would, even... I would kind of ignore them and talk onto my friends. Yeah. It was like I had something to distract us. Yeah. Uh -huh. Where obviously, yeah. so when you, you was on your own, when obviously yeah. that so that happened. All because of all that was the thing where I didn't like going places by yeah. myself, and I did go places by myself, but I didn't yeah. like it. And if I like got on a bus, I would have to sit on the left because I didn't like the left side yeah. of my face was worse. So I sit on the left so you'd only see the right side of my face because yeah. I'd look better from the right. Yeah. It's funny though, isn't it, how it's just, I can't things it's affect you? Awful, I uh -huh. think. It's just a but word I didn't for it. keep us in. I didn't stay yeah. in. I would always go places. I always went out with my friends. Like, my yeah. mum left school, went out everywhere. And then it got to the pubs, and people would say things in pubs. But they didn't really interfere, or I think they, they felt my embarrassment. But mm. there's been times in pubs where I've gone over to a group of men. Yeah. And one of them shouting things, and I, I'll say, "Do you know me?" Yeah. And they say, "No." Mm. Well, why are you shouting across the pub? Yeah. And then they would feel that big. Yeah, I can say I met them. Yeah, I yeah. had somebody once come over and said, oh, "I bought you a drink. I just want to apologise for what I shouted." <laughs> I'm like, well, "Why did you even do it in the first place?" Like you say, I make yeah. them feel, you know, that big, and just yeah. the fact of why even do it in the first place. Like you say, it's just borderline, you know. But I think this day no and age means. now, people wouldn't see things like that. They'd probably look. Yeah. And, and I don't think people, yeah, well, other people wouldn't stand for it, would they? No. I think it's just, I think, like you say, did, now. did you ever have a situation where someone would interfere and step in and defend, or was uh, there any? My brother one time um, yeah. pushed somebody down an escalator <laughs> wow. in Newcastle. I said something to us, and my brother went, he's laughing at you in front, and I said, oh, just ignore it. And, and I had another instance when I got married. Um, I was in a pub in Washington and a person was, ah, look at her nose. And mm. I was like, oh my God, please, no. I'm, I'm like, with my husband. Yeah. And um, he noticed and he went, I tell you what, I'm going to jump over that pool table in a minute and I'm going <laughs> to 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I went, please don't, we'll just go. Yeah. And we went. But, yeah, I had yeah. two instances where people... I mean, fair play to your brother, because I'll do the same. Yeah. <laughs> I'd probably just yeah. be like, you won't, but you know. There's been, like, I've met people over the years, like me and Paul bumped into somebody a few months ago, and he said, I remember Sharon when she was young, you know, mm. Paul, he says, that, he says that girl took some stick yeah. from being a young'un. So I remember being in pubs in Washington and people, and I thought, he got it. It's like, it was a little bit interesting to see yeah. what other people thought. Yeah, yeah, heard. definitely. Yeah, because uh-huh. might not say at the time, but uh, now. Yeah, and I think there is people out there who probably like me, who hadn't had further surgery being younger, who can be referred now for further surgery, because I think there is a lot of people whose jaw, I've seen it on the group, mm. where the jaw's a bit out of line. I've seen a guy not long ago, um, looked like he had a tooth coming out the front of him. I think I was in that, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I thought, do you know, there is things that can be done, but people don't realise the thing, because yeah. you're older and you've now left the hospital, but you can be referred. Yeah, it's one of them things... That the I interview with Sharon about. was very eye-opening. She was the first person I'd ever spoken to in depth about their story, and it was great to hear someone else's cleft experience for the first time, and I couldn't wait to hear more cleft stories. But for now, it was time to leave Washington and head home. When we came back from Washington, we decided to take a day off and rest before our next day's filming. I'd woken up when my dad phoned me and informed me that, coincidentally, Jeremy Vine was doing a segment all about clefts on his BBC Radio 2 show. After one Medical Monday, do you have a child with a cleft palate or do you yourself have one? Sarah Jarvis will answer all your questions. I decided to call in and try and speak with Jeremy. So, <clears throat> they've cancelled my call because I've been on for ages. Now, as I said previously, we had taken the day off to rest and my camera operator, Brandon, wasn't with me. No, my, oh, you know, f- in the of that program. Thank you for calling BBC Radio 2. Your name and number will be stored securely for up to one year for verification purposes, or in case we need to contact you about your contribution to the show. Your data will then be deleted. I had never called into a radio station before, so I was doing everything I could to try and get on the show. Sally in Birmingham says, I believe cognitive decline... Sally in Birmingham? Talk to Ronnie and Caddock. Bloody hell! After many calls and messages, I received a call back. He says the problems run much deeper. Oh god, oh god, they're ringing me, they're ringing me, oh my god. Hello? Hi Ronnie, I'm calling back from Radio 2. Oh perfect, hello. Hello, thanks for your email. I was checking whether we phoned them back and see if they'd be up for a chat with Jeremy. I'm guessing from your email you, you probably would be. Yes, 100%, 100%. Bursting with excitement, I eagerly waited by the radio, when eventually, my moment had arrived. Ronnie Carlyle's new record, Big Big Love. She's brilliant to see her back in action. Ronnie Parsons emails about cleft lip and says, I was born with one, and a palate as well. I'm studying at Salford, sorry, Stafford College, doing a film and media course. I'm currently making a cleft lip documentary for my final project, says Ronnie. I do have a bit of a lisp, and I've had to have several operations, but I'm lucky it's not bothered me too much in life. What? In fact, I love it in a way, and it makes me who I am. Is it... Do you think we'll get... <laughs> to the point, Sarah, where there isn't any trace left after operation. Even though I didn't get to speak with Jeremy on his show, I carried on with the rest of my documentary. My next stop was Manchester, where I met Ian Cale, a 53-year-old artist who was born with a cleft open palate. How am we? <laughs> Very casual, just oh, so well, yeah. out there. Oh, <coughs> right, um... So, um, when did your parents find out that you had um, the cleft? Was it sort of when you were born or a scan or...? I don't think they actually found out until I was actually born, the okay. day I was born, uh, which was obviously quite a shock. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, I think it's at the time I was born, April uh, 1970. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think that's well before. Uh, scans were available for Yeah. That. When did you sort of have your repair after you were born? Was it the quite f- soon or...? The first one was, I think I was nine months old. Oh, OK. Um, I've got five photographs of myself, that's all. Yeah. Uh, as a, a baby with a cleft. Oh, OK. And they were taken in September 1970. 
Yeah. And I still had it then. Oh, so okay. I'm thinking it's the nine months to the year, but I'm not ah. 100% sure. See, it's quite different because mine was, uh, my lip was repaired in six weeks. And so then, quick. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's a, a strange difference. And my palette was three months. Right. So um, I had both mine sort of done within that window that you had. Did you have them done at different times or with it at the um, same time? Well, the first one, like you say, was the, the nine months yeah. period. And then the other major one when I was six. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, because the way in which my face grew yeah. after the first operation, it was to adjust the kind of soft tissue, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I was um, going to say, that, that would have been my next question if you had any surgery sort of post uh, cleft repair. So anything that you've sort of had done since because of the cleft or? Um, well, the palate, uh, it, was also, it was always like a, a partial. Yeah. Um, cleft with a palate and I'm not 100% sure when that was actually corrected whether uh, that was at the six months yeah. nine months period or the uh, the five six years I'm not oh sure. wow wow um, so I, it's one of those that look at you you can't really tell a yeah. lot of people you can really tell so um, whatever doctor did it, I think they've done a really good job um, and like other people you can really sort of tell um, with sort of the way that their face has sort of grown out yeah um, but yeah I think obviously the doctor did, did a yeah. really good job because looking yeah. at you I can't really tell um, obviously I've um, not got a full sort of moustache or anything yet but sort of the way you get that little bit of sort of like a shaven yeah. line yeah. Um, sort of the same with yourself um, I actually keep I, I intentionally <laughs> trim it oh. to make it more obvious oh wow it is, yeah, so yeah. It, it's my kind of like David Bowie uh. Aladdin Sane <laughs> little <laughs> yeah, just a little, 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 little yeah, scar, that's yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, when you were growing up, um, did you face any sort of like bullying? Um, or any like name calling and like how, how did you react to any of that? Um, I don't think there was any one big incident, um, uh, especially at school, I can't remember anything sort of massive. Um, th there were certain members of staff, uh, teaching staff, that were particularly supportive yeah. um, because with having a, a cleft lip uh, it did get me out of doing lots of sports like contact sports yeah. so I didn't have to play rugby, basketball, oh. stuff like that so uh, the PE teacher um, he yeah he was quite unpleasant mm. um, but uh, it was the 1970s yeah <laughs> 80s yeah. sorry yes. 80s yeah. I mean he, 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 even the language used around sort of cleft yeah. lips and palates, you know, um, you know the, the, the term hair lip, mm. which I grew up with, yeah. you know. Uh, thankfully, that's no longer used. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. So I, th I think people are becoming a lot more aware. Yes, definitely. Of, uh, of not just the condition, but also the language around it. Yeah, that's uh, one of the main reasons I wanted to do the documentary is to sort of educate people, because um, there's a lot of people that I know um, when talking and saying like, oh, I've got a cleft lip, they're like, what's that? Or they didn't even realise. Yeah. Um, and it's one of them to make people just aware. And even though nowadays you don't get sort of as horrific, there's still the odd sort of comment here and there. Yeah. Um, even in the process. Yeah. Of, um, I, I, I still get quite a lot of people um, who just think it's a regular scar. Yeah. Um, you know, whether you've been in a fight or something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. So. Uh, I always play on that as well. I said, oh yes, I was in terrible fight. Yes, yeah. oh, I, I used to do the same at school. I used to say like a dog bit my lip or something. It was, it's one of them, I feel like if you twist it and make it sort of a, a funny joke and, yeah. and a funny matter that people will just sort of feel like a lot more comfortable with, you know, and sort of how people bring it up and stuff. Yeah. Do you feel like it's affected like your confidence overall or? Um. Yeah, I think, it, if anything, it's increased my confidence. Yeah. Um, I mean, my parents were really good in terms of, like, positive uh, reinforcement yeah. over, over kind of, like, having a cleft lip and how being different is actually a good thing. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I think that kind of, like, constant sort of reinforcement and, uh, and love at an early age yeah um yeah i think i I've, i mean i'm a lecturer now so yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. you know that involves communication groups large groups mm. so yeah i think it's if anything it's been a positive thing yeah i guess that's, that's really good i'm the same i feel like it's sort of so if you had the opportunity um and had the experience of being born without a cleft yeah would you want to do it or would you stick with how you are and... It's a great question. Um, 
Yes, what, what day is it today? It's a Wednesday. Yeah. Now I'm going to say on a Wednesday, I'd, I'd keep it. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'd change anything other than the fact that I do remember the second operation when I was six. Oh. Uh, the nurses gave me a, a very well cooked uh, lamb chop to Ooh. eat. So That's... that was a bit of a negative. Oh. <laughs> but yes. other than that, no, I, I don't think I, I don't think I would change it. Yeah. It's also brought about um, uh, a very kind of um, it's quite hard to explain a, a, a very fluid idea to uh, my own face. I think mm. these days we um, you know, working with my students who are, are very kind of like self-aware, yeah. especially in social media, the images that I put out. Yeah, sense. definitely. Um, the fact that um, because my face, my lower face, was was designed by a surgeon in Leeds in 1970 called Mortimer Shaw, mm. um, my attitude to my own face is very fluid. Yeah. Um, and and that's led me to have things like my ears pinned back. Yeah. Um, uh, I would love to have more cosmetic surgery. Mm. Um, which I don't think many people actually sort of talk about. Um, and, and when they do talk about it, it's, it's in a sort of like, you call vein. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, but also even down to things like having tattoos, you know, it's yeah. this body modification thing about um, being almost like a work in progress. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think you've already talked through what we've got. Okay, so I brought along here a few of the little artifacts. Okay. Um, first one, uh, this set of five photographs. So, to the best of my knowledge, these are the only photographs taken of me prior the first operation. Wow. Um, so this is September 1970. So I'm wow. with my brother, uh, oh my Kevin. God. Yeah. I guess say you uh, can actually obviously with that one with your teeth as well. Yeah. Sort of coming through. That's, yeah. So that's yeah. something that's. Yeah. It's weird to um, actually see. Um, these yeah. horrific things. These are uh, just a, a small selection of the. Um, uh, the plates that I had to wear to correct my teeth because my teeth grew in very strange directions. Yeah. Uh, so you can see from the smallest ones here, I must must have been six yeah. for that one, going through to um, sort of, I think I stopped wearing these when I was about 16, 17. Wow, wow. I've just noticed as well, they've got numbers on. Ah. It's three, six, six, no idea what that means. <laughs> um, and then finally, this little glass vial um, it's tiny, tiny, tiny. But just in the bottom, there are my stitches from my second operation. So, that, so that's oh 1976. So, non-dissolvable ones, obviously. Um, the label used to be all written out with all information, but all that's faded. I could so, say over top. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So, um, strange what you collect. I could <laughs> say. I mean, it's just. I think this is probably. I mean. I've never really seen anything like that before. And right. it, it, um, yeah, gobsmacked, yeah. really. Um, makes it quite real, doesn't it? Yeah, it it's, makes it yeah. sort of everything into perspective. I mean, yeah. these are just, like you said, sort of different, like, uh, you can see that like, sort of ages as well, like obviously that one to that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So these would like, hook around your teeth. And yeah, then yeah. Sort of slot into um, I mean, my, my teeth grew out at really strange directions. Some yeah. didn't grow at all. Yeah. So uh, you can see this one here, that, that one never grew. Uh, which is, I still got like false ones yeah. up there. Just, every Thursday, going to the dentist. Ev with, every single yeah, wow. With my dad, and we'd stop for fish and chips on the way home. Oh, because that's the. Since <laughs> kind of like, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what you want, especially after a dentist appointment as well. That's all you want. Yeah. Wow. That's. I'm still baffled, I'm gobsmacked. Um, After all my interviews were over, I was scheduled to have my first adult cleft appointment. For 17 years, I have always been under the Birmingham Children's Hospital, under the cleft clinic. But as my adulthood loomed, I was moved to the adult cleft clinic in the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham. You're right, love. I can say I've seen skis. I've never done this before. Uh, but I've got an appointment at quarter past 12 for the uh, cleft clinic. Having not been to the Birmingham Children's Hospital since February 2022, I was slightly nervous and I didn't know what to expect. Yes, that's me. Right, my love. I've booked you in. Okay. Okay. So now, you're going to have to 
it's the third down. Yeah. You can pass the window. Yeah. You can some blue chair on the left. Yeah. Take the down, wiping down on the floor. Oh, sounds. Cheers, love. Thank you. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, and then just get a shot of it zoomed in. So you can have. Oh, that's me. Oh, hold on. Ronnie A. Parsons, Ike Pasha, Area 2. Reception 4A. Where the hell's that then? <laughs> Is this 4A? Uh, right there. Yeah, yeah, morning, <laughs> afternoon, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> I think. Good one of those. Oh, 10 minutes and it's afternoon. But... Good morning. <laughs> Come on, Hi, Hello. Hi, Hi, nice to see you. Is it Ronnie? Yes, Hi, yeah. Ronnie. Who did you bring with you today? Uh, it's me, Mike Brandon. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Ronnie, this is the first time we've met. Yes. Me. My name's Rachel. I'm Rachel West. I'm one of the orthodontic consultants. Okay. Let's have a little peek. Of course. <laughs> All right, darling. But yeah, even though you come to see the orthodontist, you definitely still need to see your general dentist. So even though the brackets come off that lower incisor, it's stayed in a reasonable position. It's not moved too far, so it won't be too difficult to pick that back up again. No major spaces on the lower, which is good. Okay, darling. And bite together for me. All right, you're not far. You're really not far off, I promise. Yes. <laughs> well done. And I think you're doing a reasonable job looking it after it all anyway. Bite together one more time for me. So, my journey was over, and I'd learned a lot not only about myself, but other people's cleft experiences as well. So I sat down and wrote it on Facebook, and do you know that story? Yeah, it's been to Scotland, Wales, London. I've had people share it, yeah. and because of that story, it's made the business more busier. Yeah. Because people have posted items in and they've seen, yeah. you know, they've thought, oh, Zigzag, so at the bottom it just says, I am the owner of Zigzag yeah. alterations, and if anybody can run a business, <laughs> if I can run a business, anybody yeah. can run a business. My, my grand's best friend, uh, she always used to say that, oh, don't, don't get him the operation because it looks so cute, it looks so cute. <laughs> Glad that we did. Yeah. Um, Children having cleft up and palate, and you know they're kind of shunned in society. Yeah. Where education is not great. Yeah. And where they don't have access to surgery. Um, and so yeah, I just saw that in my from a mission point of view, that's what drove me to cleft. Um, yeah. For, for, for me personally, but it's different for different people. Wow, that's brilliant. It has been an eye-opening experience for me, and certainly one I'll never forget.